a very special two-hour Extreme Makeover Home Edition. She was the love of his life, the brightest star in their sky. I like the stars. This means a lot to Anne-Marie. One of their dreams was to renovate this tiny little house on a beautiful street. And all their dreams were about to come true. Here it was all planned that it was going to be redone and now fitted for the boys. And she never made it. They found out that she was in late stages of leukemia. And she uh, opened up her eyes and just gave me a big smile and just closed them again. Anne-Marie was buried on her 29th birthday. That means that everything that she and John had planned together had stopped. Good morning, the Cali family! <laughs> now, the Extreme Makeover design team has oh, just yeah. seven days to help a hard-working cop make his wife's last wish come true. A new home for their family. This is a perfect place for us to be and a perfect family for us to have. One house. Look at our house. It's gone. Now we can't go in there. One week. We'll be done in seven days. At least that's the idea. Move that One extreme makeover. The home edition. Guys, look at that. That's our house. St. James. We're going to meet the Vitali family. It's John, his three sons, Jack, Adrian, and Luke. These guys suffered a huge loss, and we're going to try and help them get back on their feet. They're actually getting nominated by one of John's fellow Suffolk County police officers. Take a look at this tape, and you'll see what I mean. Hi, I'm Tony. I know John Vitali, and I'm nominating him for this extreme makeover home edition. The police department's like a family, and one of our, when one of our own is hurting, we hurt too. Hi, ABC. We're the Vitali family. I'm John. This is uh, my oldest son, Jack. He'll be four. This is my middle guy, Adrian. He's 28 months. This is Luke. He's uh, 17 months. So John and Anne-Marie Vitali were a young, loving couple. John's a career police officer. Been with the force 10 years. Actually works in a program they call Community Outreach, which means he really helps out with the neighborhood and puts out a positive image. He's not afraid to put his life on the line for somebody else, a complete stranger. So John and Anne-Marie bought their first house together. They had a beautiful boy together, then two more beautiful boys. And Anne-Marie was gonna stay home and take care of the kids. She's a beautiful, outgoing person. I mean, she, she cared more for everybody else than herself. She always had that smile. Now that they had five in the family, John and Anne-Marie moved in with her parents so they could start working on expanding that small house that they bought. Everything's going smooth, great. We're gonna start working on there. New house, their additions, to tear down this, rebuild that. So we were at my wife's parents' house for about two months, and in March of 2004, uh, my wife wasn't feeling that well. Anne-Marie started getting tired all the time, and her skin started bruising, even though she didn't really hurt herself. And right away, you knew something was wrong. I mean, she's my best friend, I know. You know when something's wrong. She went to the doctor and found out she had an advanced form of leukemia. Uh, you know, there's a big shock. I mean, we, you know, we were terrified and we didn't know what to do. So she was in the hospital for six or seven weeks getting, you know, heavy duty medication, chemotherapy, and, you know, just uh, trying, to, trying to beat the leukemia. Five months after being diagnosed, Anne Marie died. She was buried on what would have been her 29th birthday. Before she died, Anne-Marie made John promise to keep their house and to raise their children in it. My wife wanted them to grow up there, and I wanted to live those dreams for her to, to move back there. 
So John and the boys are still staying with the in-laws, while his house sits empty needing repairs. Now all the money they'd saved to fix up the place went into medical bills. So now here I am raising my three children alone and working full time, uh, you know, and all I want, uh, you know, is just really for my kids to have a better, better life. That's, that's, that's it. There was no way, there is no way that John can do this on his own. And it's very important for them, and they am right. ABC, please help John Vitale. He really needs us. I know Anne-Marie's looking down and saying, oh, please, so my boys can be raised where I would like them to be. Oh, man. So this is going to be a little different. Um, we're going to go over to Anne-Marie's parents' house, pick up John and the kids, put them on the bus, and we'll go check out their old house and find out what we're up against. Guys, are you with me? Yes. yes. Can we do this? Yes. yes. Let's yes. do it! And this has been a completely overwhelming experience for John and his boys. But we're here to make a change in all of that. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Anne Marie's death is it's new to everyone. And, uh, you can see that uh, it's, been, it's been tough for all of them. Bye. 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 This is a perfect place for us to be and a perfect family for us to help. So, you think Emory would be glad to see us? Definitely, definitely. Obviously, I wish my wife was here. I'm sure she's looking down, uh, you know, to make sure they're safe. We'd much rather not see you here. We could have her back. <laughs> yeah, I know it's been tough. It has. These guys have been good. They have good days, bad days. <laughs> I know you guys dream was to, to fix up your old house and make it big enough for the family. Yeah, it was. Well, hopefully we can uh, finally make those dreams happen. Definitely, that, that sounds great. Well, I'm sure you guys have loved having these guys, but it sounds like it's time for them to go home, huh? They have to get in their own space and get into a routine. Well, let me tell you what's going to happen. Yeah. You guys are going on vacation for a week, and we're going to work on your house while you're gone. Now, John, the kids, would you like to know where you guys are going on vacation? It definitely would. How does Park City, Utah sound? That sounds awesome, right? <laughs> Park City, Utah. You guys ready for that? Uh -huh. Yeah. Huh? Yeah? Daddy? What? I want to go on the bus. You want to go on the big bus? <laughs> OK. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we'll actually get you on the bus. But first, you guys need to show me where you've been living. Then we'll all pile on the bus and go check out your old house, which is the house we'll actually be renovating. Okay? That sounds guys, great. Show me the house. Let's go. Oh, come on, guys. Your heart goes out to a guy like this who, not only does he have a full-time job, but he's also raising three kids on his own. I mean, we, we thought we had everything going for us, and then, uh, you know, in, in an instant, everything just, everything just went, just went away. You know, every day I miss her. I mean, you know, it's only been seven months. You know, my children, they're very young, and, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to make them not forget her. When it was the final days, you know, we rushed to get the kids up there. And, uh... <laughs> so, she did get to see them for one last time, which I was happy about. She didn't want him to leave that little property that they bought together. She wanted them to have their home there because she said she wanted to know where to find them. We tell them that you know, Mommy died and she went to heaven. She's, you know, up there just looking down. And, uh, you know, it would be nice to go back to our old house so she will be able to find the kids if she wants to look down. So John Vitale is what you'd call a good guy. He uh, is a hardworking guy. He's a loving father. So you've been, you've been a policeman for, what, 10, 10 years on the force, right? 10 years, yeah. Does Jack want to be a police officer like his dad? That's what he says, yeah. If you ask him, he'll probably tell you he wants to be my partner. Right, Jack? Jack, what do you want to be when you grow up? Policeman. A yeah. policeman? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a beauty? Yeah. 
This looks like they love playing outdoors. Oh, yeah. In a castle. Look at this with the moon and the stars and the shooting star. John and Henry wanted their boys to always remember her, to always know that mommy is the brightest star in the sky. You know, my wife is always into that celestial type stuff for them. So this is the room with all the moon and the stars. This is the kid's nursery. Man, it's got to be brutal. Unbelievable. Three kids under the age of four. You lose your, your love of your life. We didn't get to meet Anne Marie, but we see a photo of her. And just the smile that she has, you can tell she was a wonderful person. I know she must have been amazing. Yeah, she was amazing. She's still pulling strings. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, oh, we yeah. do, definitely. She's making it all happen. It was her dream. Here it is, coming true. This is uh, where we've been staying for the last 14 months. John is sleeping in the one bedroom with the youngest, Luke, who's in a crib. That's a pretty cool crib. And Marie kind of picked that out? Yes. I actually, I love that crib. This man seriously needs his, his own, own space. Right. Yes. Back here is my other two sons, Jack and uh, Adrian. This is where they sleep. Jack sleeps in the, the uh, car bed. OK. And uh, Adrian sleeps in the crib over, he over here. As you can tell, it's not too big. And they have tiny, no space. We're in the laundry room, Paige. This is the laundry room, isn't it? Yeah. It's tough for all of them there. And Raymond and Janet have really uh, sacrificed a lot. And uh, it's time that, that everybody gets their own space. The house was going to be for her, her husband and the kids. She won't be able to share it with them now, but she's going to see it. And hopefully uh, her spirit's going to be all over that house. We think so. Coming up. One of the amazing things is when we pulled up in front of the house, there's already a crowd gathered outside. No idea how they got here this fast. I've never seen anything like this. This is crazy. That's next on Extreme Makeover Home Edition. All right. Thanks. Thanks for everything. Love you guys. Oh, okay. Love you well, we loaded everybody up on the bus. You ready to go on the bus? Yeah. Oh, 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 in. Oh, hi. We took a bus ride over to the house that John and Emery bought. All right, everybody on board. Bye bye, Bye. 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 One of the amazing things is when we pulled up in front of the house, there was already a crowd gathered outside. I've heard your story. They care about what happened, and I have no idea how they got here this fast. I've never seen anything like this. This is crazy. Are you waving? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's just awesome. I can't even explain it. So it's just a good feeling. I have a lot of fan, you know, friends and family and neighbors. This is, was their dream. This is where it was all going to happen. It's cute. It's adorable. Tiny. So the house as we see it is small. It's in good condition, but it's very small. This is our house, yes. Yeah. a very small, empty, kind of spooky house, and I'm sure John has a lot of emotions walking into it because it reminds him of Anne Marie. The house is empty, empty except for a couple little things. So I, I saw the one Winnie the Pooh over here. Yeah. And then over here in this bedroom is another Winnie the Pooh. Somebody likes Winnie the Pooh. There's not a lot to save in this house. We gotta save what we can. Yeah. I like the stars. This means a lot. It meant a lot to Anne Marie. And it's so painted right on the wall. I think we just cut it out, cut the drywall out, and yeah. save it. Anne Marie had this wonderful mural on the wall with moons and stars and a window frame. And she loved that theme. Whatever we can do to, to, to keep her, her memory alive, and that's what we'll do. Uh, that's really important. Are you ready to go on vacation? Yeah. Well, pilot in the limo, let's get you in there. Here comes Jack. Kids, you guys have fun on vacation. Bye and bye. no snowball fights. When we sat down for our meeting, one thing we wanted to keep in mind was that John and Emery bought this house together, so let's keep as much as the old house as possible. But then we add on. It's all that build two wings on either side of it, one for the boys and one for John. I'd like to give him something like a place where his buddies can come and hang out. So he has his own den, basically. I like that the den is uh, off to his room, so the kids won't even know it's there. Oh, so maybe we make it secret. Yeah, like, the uh, secret uh, den. I'll... Absolutely. Hello? Hey, John. Hey, how you doing, Ty? Hey, man, listen, I know you're heading to vacation and everything, but I, I didn't have a chance to ask you, is there anything that 
Well, you want me to save? Actually, yeah, in the, in the uh, boys' bedroom, there's a painting on the wall that my uh, sister-in-law painted for us for the uh, birth of our first child, Jack. Okay, this thing with the moons and the stars, that's what you're talking about? Exactly. The window. Okay, you got it. Now, is there anything else? Uh, actually, yeah, one more thing. There's a, um, on the uh, basement door jam. Basement door jam. There's like uh, heights from my children that I would like to save, if that's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, these little marks right here. Yes. So you want us to you want us to keep the door jam? You got it, man. We'll see you in a week. Okay, Ty. Thank you very much. Bye bye. It just seems important that we keep Anne Marie in this house, and it's obvious that she did the nursery. And she painted those colors, and she put that border up with all the moons and stars and everything. So we have to do that for Anne Marie. Yeah. Because he's still the baby, and she's up there looking down, and I think he needs to feel that. Number two is Adrian, and he's two and a half, and he loves Winnie the Pooh. And Tigger, too. <laughs> and you sort of remind me of, uh, uh, what's his name? Eeyore. Eeyore. Yeah. Oh. So maybe that's your room, Paul. I'm going to have to do a little, have to do a little research. When we were walking through their house, we saw this cute little picture of Jack, all dressed up like a policeman. I'm guessing he wants to grow up to be like his dad, so I'm thinking, cop room. This backyard is so great for kids, so I'm thinking give them a huge play area, maybe like a yeah. castle. We were to do a little, a little drawbridge. A moat. A moat around. Another really cool room in the house is gonna be the sunroom. And we put a spa in there, some exercise equipment, so dad doesn't have to go away to the gym. Design team, tell me we have a plan. We, we have, have a, a we plan. We do. Fantastic. We'll take that existing house and okay. make it the heart of the new house. And then they still have the uh, the memory of the old house right in the middle. Yeah. Exactly. I like that. This little house was a little house, but uh, it was a sturdy little house. You know, we wanted to save uh, the foundation. And then on this side, add a whole wing for John. Lots of room just for him. Actually, that's, that's what I'd like to make my, my project. OK. His, his bedroom, uh -huh. I will work on. That den right next door is going to be uh, sort of a secret room from the little boy, too. So there'll be a secret room inside the secret room. So uh, the trick will be, of course, keeping it secret and, of course, finishing the project. You know what? Here's the deal. I've, we've already seen a crowd out front when we, when we pulled up right, here. So yeah. We've got a lot of community support. Let's get this thing right. I mean, this guy's lost a lot, and he's trying to hold it together. And if we can give them the dream that Emory and him always wanted, then let's make it happen. Yeah. OK? So guys, can we do it this way? We can do it. We let's can. Do it for Anne Marie. Let's do it for yes. Anne Marie, guys. Let's do it. Let's do it. Coming up. Tell me what is going on. We had termite damage and water damage. You can see some of it over in there. We didn't expect to frame up a brand new house, but that's what we're doing. That's next on Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Hey guys, how we doing? Yeah! Thanks for being here. So listen, uh, I gotta make a phone call. So can we be quiet for just one sec? Just one sec. Sal, hey, yeah. It's me, Ty, man. How are you? Yes, I'm in town again. So you probably already know why I'm calling. I know. I really should have called ahead. But listen, you'll still do it, right? Sal from Allure. We knew we were in good hands. He's helped us twice already. Third time's a charm. When Sal and an army like that pulls up, you know you got nothing to worry about. I got here as fast as I can. I have a business to run. Well, I'm glad you're here, buddy. I'm glad you're here. Are we ready to do this? Yeah! Remember what this is about. It's about bringing a family home. Anne-Marie Vitale, her dream was for her family to live in this home. Our job is to go in there Build a home. Build it safely. Build it with quality and build it quick. At the end, we're going to have the pleasure and the privilege of bringing a family home, a very deserving family. Let's do it. Welcome to what we like to call 
see what's happening. Oh, wow. Look at that. See that? Yeah. Looks like we got a little siding work going on. It goes to siding. Oh, oh man. man. Inside and out. Hey, let me help you out. So welcome to the bedroom, or one of them. And you can see the guys in one just ripping things apart. It's just coming down like it's nothing. What bedroom? It's all gone. It's fantastic. Red bed. Demo, my favorite. This is something that everybody always wanted in the room. And so we're going to cut this out, we're going to save it, put it back in the nursery. It's really important to save things that are sentimental to the family. This is the uh, the door jam that we want to save right here. Look at this, 3701, Jack was this high. 6802, Jack was this high. we got to save this piece and continue this tradition in the new house. All right, then. Let's see what else is happening. Timber! Look at our house. It's gone. Now we can't go in there. We're gonna go in there. They're gonna make it nice, nice and pretty for us, okay? And big. And big. Okay. Now this probably looks pretty scary to you guys, but you know what it looks like to me? Progress. And that's what we're trying to make happen. So you guys have a good time on vacation. And I'll try and make you, well, a finished house. We'll see you guys when you get back. Have fun on vacation. Again. Again. <laughs> Like that? Good to see we have all the materials lined up here in the street, ready to build a new house. I'm happy to see this. Right there is sheathing for our floor. Underneath this paper, really nice product. It's a composite, blue laminated product that's going to be used in the flooring, the planks that go underneath our sheathing. You know, this doesn't look like a lot of our demos because sometimes we just tear the house completely down. They love this house, so we're leaving part of this house. We're leaving that brick. We're leaving some of these walls here. We're leaving this front bay window right here. Our plan was to leave that center portion and off that build two wings on either side of it. We're adding on just as if they were going to add on. This is what they wanted to do. That was their dream, to add on. And we'll be done in seven days. At least that's the idea. What's going on here, Sal? The front wall's a shot now. We gotta change the wall. Okay. The wall's going down. Go! We have termite damage and water damage. You can see some of it over in there. Yeah. And then on the front plate, you see it all in that stud over there? Yep. As we started tearing down walls, we realized a lot of this wood was just bad. It was rotten. So we gotta get rid of it so we get them a safe house. That's right. A safe house and a quality house. Sal and his guys just kept taking down a little bit more and a little bit more a little bit more. This floor was hopefully going to be reused. We can't do that. Had some termite damage, had some water damage. Now that's going to set us back several hours. We didn't expect to frame up a brand new house, but that's what we're doing. Tell me what is going on. There's no walls. I hear this has all got to come out. Where, where are we at? You know what? A minute, I would have taken the whole foundation out and start from scratch. Suddenly, we're left with the basement. I had no choice, Michael. I had no choice. I can't, I can't give them a house that's not structurally sound. So we're only thing left standing is the chimney. I gotta take that down too. That's coming down too. We thought, and Sal thought, we were doing a remodel and we ended up doing a from the ground up build, which is a little bit more than a remodel. Just ahead. Denise. Hey, I'm Ty. It was actually Emily's sister and her best friend. Just to give you a glimpse into how wonderful she is, I'd like you to see some of this. Never had a chance to actually meet her and would love to. So I think we should all get to know Emory. What do you say? It was a glimpse of what Emory was like and what John had lost. It was a pretty good reminder of why we're all here. That's next on Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Hey, is somebody over here Anne-Marie's sister and friend? Yes. Yep, we're over here. Yep. Okay, so you are the sister? I'm um, Anne-Marie's sister, yes. Hi. Denise. Hey, I'm Ty. Uh, I was out in the front of the house and I heard these people across the streets. It was actually Anne-Marie's sister, uh, Denise, and her best friend. So what do you guys think? Amazing. Pretty awesome, Incredible. Huh? Yes. Yeah. It's incredible. She'd be happy and proud. Oh, she would love oh, this. she'd love it. <laughs> she uh, said it to John and she said it in a joking way, but re meant it. She said, um, you can't sell the house because if anything happens to me, I just want to know where to find you. 
I know it's tough on you, man. <laughs> I could see Denise getting really kind of emotional, and I said, you know, I really wish we could have met Anne Marie. I can tell that she touched a lot of people's lives. We do miss her a lot. Right before she went to the hospital for the last time, I was lucky enough to have her in my wedding party. You wouldn't have even thought that there was anything wrong with her because she lived that night like she lived every day of her life. She lived it to the fullest. And Anne Marie's best friend said, well, if you'd like to get to know her, there's actually a tape of my wedding that she was at. Just to give you a glimpse into how wonderful she is, I'd like you to see some of this. God, I'd love that. Never had a chance to actually meet her and would love to. Uh, I know she was really, really special, and uh, I think anybody who got to know her, you know, um, was a lucky person. Well, it's good meeting you guys. Me too. Right. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I'll be back. Thanks. Right, thanks. Hey, Michael, I want you to see something. Can you, hey. can you meet me in the bus in a minute? Yeah. Hey, Paige, can you do me a favor? Can you meet me in the bus in a minute? I want to show you something. Sure. We were all busy working away, and Ty grabbed each one of us and asked us to meet him on the bus. Hey, thanks for being here. You know, we almost felt like we knew Emory just from knowing John, her parents, and the three boys, but we actually didn't. All we had were pictures. I imagine if we take a look at this, we really kind of get an idea of what she was like. And they say that she was just full of spirit and full of fun. So I think we should all get to know Emory. What do you say? Yeah. I uh, put the tape in, and you really get to see the spirit and the soul of Anne Marie. Here she is. There she is. That's her. It's like her there. Only two months. Good God, Lord. look how beautiful she is. She was luminous. She was so beautiful. When she smiled, she lit up the room. Watching Anne Marie and the new bride just embrace. It was just so hard to see. Anne-Marie's best friend was just starting out her life. And Anne-Marie knew hers was about to end. You saw Anne-Marie hugging her friend and saying goodbye. You saw that. And then you see John come up and kiss his wife. And how John tried to be just as sturdy as a rock and, and, and not show any fear. It just makes you realize how much John's gone through. You saw John kiss his wife and dance with his wife, maybe for the last time. As sad as this is, she never for a moment seemed to crack there. She just always had a big, big, beautiful smile on her face. It was a glimpse of what Henry was like and what John had lost. Wow. I think that pretty much said it all. What we can do is give them the dream that Anne Marie always wanted, man. And be able to bring John and the boys home back to that house that they bought together. Just do me a favor, Ty. Yeah. Don't tell me to come back in a bus again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I got it. I hear you. I think we're gonna take another bus trip. I gotta go build a house. Coming up. Down on the ground! I actually got to join a class, a class of cadets. Hey! Are you eyeballing me again, Hemis? You want this job? Get up there! Can you, can you, can! Get up there! <sighs> That's next on Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Everybody, listen up. Stop working and listen up. I feel like we're starting to lose momentum. This was supposed to be a remodel. Now, as the house started being demolished, Sal and his team realized that this house was in much worse disrepair than anybody imagined. Unfortunately, that put us behind about eight to 10 hours. So Sal and his team stayed all night and they worked round the clock. And by the morning of day three, there was a house that was framed and they were pretty much caught up. I posted up on these two trees, pictures of the Vitali family. Amory Vitali died, 28 years old, three children. This is why they're here. This is why they're getting no sleep and working throughout the night to make sure that this family is taken care of. This isn't just framing and sheetrocking. This is fulfilling a dream. 
that kind of spirit and that kind of positive energy that we're all about. Are we going to pick up the momentum? Yeah. You're going to really pick it up? Yeah. Thank you. I've never seen some guys so dedicated to making sure not only they do a wonderful thing for a family, but they also show their lead guy that they can step up to any challenge he dishes out. Hey guys, what about a big hand of applause for the guys in blue who worked all night to frame up this house? We got some breakfast sandwiches here. The guys haven't eaten for a while. And this will get you that a little bit further. Little sandwiches here, little sandwiches. Yo, Sal. Thank you, Paulie. One of my projects this week is Jack's police room. So I took a little trip down to the Suffolk County Police Academy. I'm doing a whole police themed room and I actually know nothing about being a policeman. It just so happens that we have a recruit class about to begin. I actually got to join a class, a class of cadets that's going through uh, training right now. Hey! You eyeballing me again, Hemis? I also got to meet a couple training officers. You want this job? Get up there. They're kind of scary. <sighs> And I'm like, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't go on. You can, you can, you can! Get up there! These guys just push you. They know what it takes to be strong and to be tough out there. Louder, Thomas! Yes, sir! Louder! Sir, come in, sir! These guys go through intense training, intense classes, and these guys are my heroes. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Besides bringing back a few bruises, uh, got a lot of good stuff for Jack's police room. Nice! What we got? I'm liking that. What is that, a shield? Oh, it works. It works. Holly, look. We just got this great stuff that's really going to dress out Jack's room. And this, for the top of the bed that I'm making? Yeah! Give me the really make him feel like uh, he's in a police academy. Uh, I took some black and white photos of the kids, and now I'm putting them all into one file. Hey. Sorry, guys, this is kind of off limits. It's all about the secret room. Several people have been sneaking around this, this whole site. I'm afraid you people are out. Not only have I got my own secret project, but there's a secret project within the secret project, and it's called a secret door. But see, the whole idea of a secret is, is that nobody sees it until it's actually unveiled. That's how you keep a secret. Now, the only way to make sure a door doesn't fall off is to make sure the hinges are oiled properly. The secret to slamming a door in procession is to make sure, of course, it's a solid door. Now, this isn't the door to my secret project or my secret room, but it does work pretty well for the project. So that's my new way to slam the door and say, stay out of my secret room. Manja, bam. So I went to Sears with a mission. I had some stuff I had to get. So, you know, Johnny's a cop. We've got to make sure he stays in top physical condition. What I'm trying to create is a room for John so he doesn't really have to go out and spend time away from the home. So I'm going to put a little spa on there and some workout equipment, and he'll have his own gym right at home. Bullseye. We're actually incorporating a lot from the old house into this nursery, and we're going to bring a lot of the colors that Amory chose from the nursery in there. So Luke's getting the, uh, the starry night room, and we're saving that piece apart. And we're going to do yellows, and we're going to do blues for him. It's going to be bright, it's going to be cheery, and it's going to be really happy. We're doing good. Well, it's day three, and considering that we had to build a brand new house, I think we're doing pretty well. We already got our sheathing all on the roof. Paper's down on the one side, and they're ready to lay shingles on that side. Let's go check out what's going on inside. It's looking really good. Considering demo was just yesterday, these guys are jamming. They're doing very, very well. This is John's den coming right off his master bedroom here. Master bedroom, master bath, master den. We have one of John's friends here. You know what's going on in that room off the bedroom, right? Pool games, right? A little cocktails. pinochle. Cocktails. Pinochle. Pinochle's good, right? No cocktails. This here is going to be a nice fireplace right here. Guys can come in here, they can play their cards, have a nice fire going, talk about what the Yankees did that day. This right here is where I'm going to be spending a lot of time. This is Jack's room. This is going to be the cop room. And I'm thinking I'm going to be doing a bed that just comes straight out from the wall. And behind it, it's going to kind of look like a police chase, all done in a mural. All right, here I am in Adrian's Winnie the Pooh room. And uh, 
Lots of things going on in the Winnie the Pooh room. One thing is this beautiful window that looks out over the 100-acre wood. He's got a little escape door that goes into Jack's, Jack's police room. So now we're in Jack's police room, and here's Jack's closet. Inside the closet, it's going to look like you're in jail. I don't know if that's a good idea for young boys or a bad idea, but I think it'll look really, really cool. This is Luke's room, and I mean, he's just a baby. I think he's 17 months old. Luke was sleeping right next to Dad. We have the two boys that were sharing the old laundry room. Now these boys are going to have all this space. They won't know what to do with it. Coming up. Yeah! Woo! I feel the need for some speed. Woo! Let's make it happen! Yeah! That's next on Extreme Makeover Home Edition. So I want to make Adrian's Winnie the Pooh room really special. And I don't know a lot about Winnie the Pooh and the 100 acre wood, but they will in here. So Polly's never read Winnie the Pooh. He knows there's a bear and there's some honey. That's about all he knows. So he's going to have to go read up on Winnie the Pooh and take her too. I'm looking for uh, some Winnie the Pooh books. Sure. Look under W in the picture book area. So uh, I got a book from the library that tells the story of Winnie the Pooh on that blustery day. Winnie the Pooh and the blustery day, do you know that one? Yeah. Is it a good one? Yeah. And uh, I got some help from some Winnie the Pooh experts, 100 Acre Wood. It, it, that's mentioned a lot, isn't it? Yeah, a lot. Winnie the Pooh is very soft-spoken, jolly, tries to help people out. He sat right down and tried to think of something. <laughs> think, 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 think. Who's great? He's like, oh, by the, hmm, I hope the room turns out good. Well, with a little help from my friends like Tigger and Piglet, maybe the room will. Right, who's that? Eeyore. Eeyore. Mr. Uh, Rabbit Hello. with the carrots. Yeah, huh? he loves carrots. In the end, they all would like to have a Winnie the Pooh room, and they helped me out with what I would need in the room. See, here's the deal. I'm building this room for this little boy, uh, Adrian. So I, I was wondering, do you have any ideas for, like, if, if you had a, a Winnie the Pooh room, what you would like in it? Um, I don't know, a stuffed animal Winnie the Pooh. And that would be a good one, huh? And you could put trees on the walls. Trees on the wall, and the honey comes in a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Maybe you could paint them a Winnie the Pooh and make them have honey in his hand. I don't know. Maybe you could put a beehive. Yeah, you're very good at this. So I've had my own little design meeting with my team of experts and have come up with uh, some of the things that you read about. Yeah. What kind of bed do you think? Um, I know. What? Winnie the Pooh. A Winnie the Pooh bed? then I'll do a Winnie the Pooh bed. And then maybe we could take some of the honey jars and turn them into lamps. Yeah. That's an excellent idea. Thank you very much. <laughs> so here, I'm gonna let you get back to your reading. There's more Winnie the Pooh books over there, but I'm gonna check this one out. All right, thanks you guys. Good ideas. You're welcome. Okay, building a house in seven days on Long Island takes a lot. So let me give you a little bit of a tour. These are people that are here to help. That right there is a tent where we've got some catering set up. Coffee, water, things that you need to keep going all week. And of course, we're gonna need security. But what's incredible is that these guys are lining the streets for almost a solid mile. So with this kind of support, we can actually make it happen. You guys are fantastic. Now to the right, you see a house in progress. People, let's go check out the house. So as you can see, we got siding going on. These guys right here are building the block that's going on in front of the house. Excuse me, fella. So right here, you're up close and personal. Check out the sunroom. Amazing. The back here, Paige is actually working on the castle. You know what? Let's get a close up view of what's happening. Follow me. So that's going to be a four foot water feature. It's going to be cascading waterfall. That's going to pour into a moat, into a river that basically goes around the castle, which is going to be where the kids are going to play. It's unbelievable what's happening. Hey, Paige, how's it going? Good, Ty. How are you? I'm good. OK, let's pick back in the gator. I want to show you a few more things. Hang on, people. Let's do ourselves some four wheel drive it! Oh yeah! Woo! Man, I love me some four wheeling! I feel the need for some speed! Shopping is about to commence. I like this. That's awesome. What I'm looking for is John's Den. Oh, I like this. The colors are perfect. Pub, kids, cute. <laughs> I got everything I need. Hey, Connie, Polly. Yeah. So I talked to Connie and Paul and had them put their projects on hold for a minute. So I'd like you to do me a favor. I'd actually like you to take this and this and go over and meet the people at Hope. 
Ty sent Paul and I to visit some folks who've been helping out the Vitali family. It's an organization called Hope. And they help children cope with the loss of parents. Little kids don't have the ability to verbalize how they feel. So what we do is we help them give them the language. We ask the children to put on the outside of the bag what emotion they feel comfortable sharing with others. And the feelings that they don't want to show anybody else, they put on the inside of the bag. And so this little boy who lost his mom as well, um, put happy on the outside and put all the other feelings on the inside. It's just amazing how children do know what death is and that mom will not walk through that door. You know, there's nobody else that's doing what you do, and, and yet you're, you're just not receiving the funding that you really yeah, need. Yeah, we really need the funding. We, it would be wonderful to be able to have a permanent center. See, Hope moves around a lot. They've either in a church or a basement. They really have no place to call home. So so I thought maybe we'd make a little video diary and send it to send it to John and, okay. and let him know we're here. Uh -huh. and... Hi, Jack. I miss you. I hope to see you soon. Motrin sent along some mystery envelope that we gave to the Women of Hope. She's giving Susan something. <gasps> oh my God! Wow. $50,000. Just like the strength oh. you give to kids, you know, Motrin gives strength and, and they just really wanted the strengths come together. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so really much. Well, now maybe you'll have the, the help you need to help others. So then we can keep going there and everybody else can go. Is that, that's exciting, right? Yeah. Bye. 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 Just ahead. I found a couple of John's friends that uh, work with him, and I asked him, does he speak any Italian? Not that I know. Not a word. So then I found this guy. John, ciao, come stai? I let him talk to John on the phone and give him just detailed explanations of what's happening with the house. Ty is a designer molto, molto intelligent, lui I have no idea what you're saying. If we only had subtitles. That's next on Extreme Makeover Home Edition.